Michelle Visage is an international television personality, radio show host, platinum selling recording artist, and author. But she's best known as the fierce judge on the Emmy Award winning reality competition, RuPaul's Drag Race. Today she's joining us to talk about RuPaul's Drag Con, the largest three day convention celebrating art, pop culture, and all things drag. Please put your hands together for Michelle Visage. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi, nice to meet you. you. I'll go this way. Yeah. Hey. I just had to wear these to get on here because then I wouldn't fall. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God, they're so oh, cool. You. Thank you. They I help always, me see. always love your glasses. Thank you. Like, I have really. an addiction. You guys were just talking about addiction. Yes. yes. And um, that's my addiction. Yes. You really do. Like, every yeah. time I see you, it's like a new pair. Yeah. Like, would you ever do your own? Like, working on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my own line. You should. But I don't want to do um, just garbage throwaway. Yeah. So it's going to, I really appreciate the artwork and the time and the energy that goes into thought process for frames. Mm -hmm. It's not just one size fits all. You have to think about face shape and drama and all that stuff. Yeah. And the more dramatic, the more me. Of so okay. it'll be very much that. Love Speaking it. of drama, yes. DragCon is yes. just around the corner. Yeah, I'm We're very excited about that. For those who aren't familiar, what is DragCon? Well, you heard of Comic-Con. You've heard of, mm -hmm. you know, all these cons. There's a million. And DragCon is just DragCon. So <laughs> it's um, where the elite in the drag world converge and all of the fans that love us, the freaks, the misfits, the weirdos, the kids who never felt a place in society. This is the place where we can kind of all come together and it's one big happy family and nice. it's all love under one I roof. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. And you get to see your favorite drag queens and your favorite queer performers mm -hmm. and, and everybody that celebrates what we celebrate. I mm -hmm. love that. Yeah, me yeah. too. So I heard that there's a, a kids section that's going to actually be at DragCon. Yes, there, we started that last year. Okay. Um, we started it actually in Los Angeles. And there is a kids zone because, um, well, there's families with kids, but there's also kids that are, you know, mm -hmm. non-gender identifying children or I gender fluid. Uh, it's younger and younger, little baby drag queens, hmm. trans children. We, this is really a place for one love, and that's mm -hmm. what it's all about. And we can't leave out the kids because, you know, they gotta have something to do because after a while of walking around with I'll mom and mom, dad and dad, mom and dad, <laughs> they're tired, so there's things for them to do there. I love that, yeah. I love that. Making it a family event, I think, is so important in the, in the conversation. It's just like, you see families out together all the time, it's like, why couldn't they go enjoy a drag con and all have something to do? Well, you know? and, and drag has evolved so much mm -hmm. from uh, what we knew it as. I grew up here on these mean streets in New York City and hung out at the Christopher Street Piers, and that's how I kind of got involved in the gay community at the age of 17. They're the ones who took me in when I didn't fit anywhere else. So mm -hmm. it's grown into, I don't want to use the main word mainstream because it's not ever going to be mainstream because you do have middle of the country who don't really know or understand or care what gay is, let alone you know, gender fluidity or anything else that doesn't fit their construct. So um, as a mother of a queer child and a heteronormative child, for me, it's, it's important to spread the word that people are people no matter who or what they love or wear or identify as. And mm -hmm. they are, we're all humans. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And, um, what's so, another special part about this particular drag con is that your partnership with um, Swing Left. And there is a political element in getting people ready for the midterms. And, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Which I think is so important. Super like, important. You, you know, you're not only preaching, you know, inc inclusivity and acceptance, but let's, you know, take action with that. Let's just show, let's bring it to the polls. So I think it's absolutely fantastic. You know, Rue and I often get a, um, some flack. Listen, I'm a mother of an 18 year old, I'm a mother of a 16 year old. And, um, you know, there's a little f stigma that goes along with being a young in these days. Right. And, um, I, we get flack for it, but we do it in love, but we do it also to motivate. Your young voices, those 18 and older that can vote, really, really matter, and I'm looking right down the barrel because we need you to get out there and do your part. You're 18, you can vote. We need you now more than ever to use that voice. Mm -hmm. Honestly, yeah. honestly, so, yeah.
Yeah, and there's going to be so many different panels there. Could you tell us what we can expect to see? Oh my goodness, there's <laughs> panels on everything you can imagine from applying makeup to voting to everything. I'm doing one with my fellow judges, Carson Cressley, Ross Matthews, and Todrick Hall, mm -hmm. and it's called Judgy Judy's. <laughs> <laughs> and I moderate, of course, um, and we talk about just what it's like being on this side of the RuPaul's Drag Race right. mm -hmm. panel yes. and you know, versus that side. Yeah, how hard is that being a judge in the show? Because I, I mean, I'm a fan of the show. It's, it's incredible. And I and I'm an amateur lip syncer, and I always like, <laughs> and I think I'm great at it. But it must be hard. What do you look for when you're when you're, especially at the the last moments, lip sync for your life? What do you what are you looking for particularly? Listen, I'm very different to Ross Carson and Todrick in the fact that I grew up in this community right. here. Mm -hmm. I was raised off the cotton teats of drag queens. So for me, <laughs> I know everything. Teats. That's why I'm at that desk. It's not right. because RuPaul loves me, which he does, <laughs> but it's not about that. It's about my knowledge right. and my experience. Mm -hmm. And I look for. That's why I'm the one who is gonna hone in and yeah. maybe other people wouldn't see it or the other judges wouldn't go for that. I'm gonna go for that because not only will it make you better, it's also gonna extend your brand. Mm -hmm. It's not doing anything for me. Mm -hmm. uh, me, I'm not up there to just be the mean mother, although I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up there to help these kids extend their 15 minutes. I want their next, not just year, but their next 10 years to work for them, to make money, to get on TV shows, to do other stuff. Yeah. So I want their lip sync and their performance to be the best that it could be. And that's what Drag Race is all about. Am I tough? Yes. Do I do it out of love? 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What's one of your most memorable moments from the show? There's a lot, yeah. but honestly, the first, I was meant to be there season one, but I was doing morning radio oh. in mm -hmm. Florida and I had a boss who was homophobic and I didn't know that at the time mm. until I asked for two weeks off to do Drag Race and he said, mm, I don't think that's the right look for our station. Mm. And I went, the what? Huh? Mm. The right look? What does that mean? You know, and as time evolved, it kind of unfolded mm. what the look was. So when I got there um, day one of season three, finally, and I took my seat, <laughs> RuPaul looked at me and said, now the show can begin. Right, right. So that's always gonna be a memory of season three, AKA the real season one. Right. <laughs> but that, that's true, that's when they credit when the show really took off and be, kind of became oh, what Oh, go it on. Is <laughs> you Stop yes. it some more. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm just always interested because a person of the, the drag queen community, like you've always had to continuously inform people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and still do. Yeah, still do. Mm -hmm. So I always wanna know what that process is, like elevating yourself as far as the brand and, you know, Know, just becoming more accepted, but still having to have those conversations. Listen, growing up here in New York, the drag community was the most marginalized. Mm. Trans women, when I grew up, or trans men, were not even called trans. There wasn't that word. That right. word didn't exist in 1980-something. Um, <laughs> so they were just queens, or they were just gay. It was very interesting to, to learn about it and learn about the movement. So when you educate people, I think the best way to do it you know, there's a lot of hate always attacked at the LGBTQIA plus community, let alone the drag community. The hate will always be there. And it's our job to try to educate and do it through education, not through hate back. It's very easy to get sucked into trolls and be like, nah, 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 you know, and go off on them. And sometimes I have to shut them down with a word or two. Yep. But really it's much easier and better to pay it forward mm -hmm. and say, you know what? I hear that you're not understanding. You're trying to do this the wrong way. How about you think about it this way? And Nine times out of 10, they'll come around, and the one person that doesn't, you don't want them anyway. Right, yeah. yep. So, bye. I love that. You've had an incredible career, which includes top 10 hits, you know, tours, mm -hmm. millions of albums sold. Did you always find your career was linked, your career was linked to the gay community? Like the 100%. So when I started in seduction in 1989, yeah. um, it's, I came from the voguing scene, I came from the ballroom scene, right. I came from the Christopher mm. Street Piers. So I was literally raised in a house, you know, and I was raised with these kids. So I only knew that. Right. So for me, that's all I will ever be super serving. Will I move on and do other stuff? I have, I'm a judge in Ireland's Got Talent and mm -hmm. things are, are moving mainstream wise, but I will never, and I'm saying it here because I'll say it forever, I will never ever leave my core people, which is the queer community. They've always been there for me and I will always be there for them as their mother, as their aunt, as their friend. Mm. You mentioned the ball culture and I yeah. know that you used to Vogue, which Did. is what? one of my favorite things to try. I like try oh. so hard. Yeah. Good girl. Yeah. Um, Go. So what do you think about Pose? And we are seeing a little more of that culture come to the limelight and get the respect it deserves in our culture. I know it still has a lot of, you know, there's a long way to still go, but do you feel like these are moments that we should 
be aware of. Super important moments. Yeah. For, for me, who has lived it, watching that is watching my life unfold. Yeah. And me being a heteronormative cisgender woman, we weren't really seen in that community. We weren't not seen, but it wasn't about us. It was not our celebration. Mm -hmm. I was basically you know, bum-rushing their celebration, but I was loved mm. and welcomed. Mm. Um, so I, I had a family there, but Pose is a really important TV show, just like RuPaul's Drag Race, but Pose is telling an even smaller section, yeah. but just as important, because these are kids, you know, out of 25 kids in our house, 24 of them were either homeless or lived with friends or slept on couches, slept at mine, lived with their grandparents because they were, th they were thrown out of their homes for who they are. Yeah. Well, um, speaking of voguing, I think I would be disrespectful to my queen if I don't mention this. <laughs> you are a self-professed Madonna-aholic. <laughs> obviously. You, you want, obviously, you want a Madonna look like competition it when did. you're a teenager. Yeah. Um, and I'm a huge Madonna fan as well. Yeah, you're really young. Uh, yes, I know. Understatement well, of the century. Yeah. I, on her birthday, literally, got, I got 10 minutes to profess my love to her. So oh they've been very God. kind. Yeah, and I'm only 24, and it's always surprising when I say it, that. It's very surprising. Yes. My children know who she is, too, trust. Right, yeah. My mom, my uncle made very sure that I knew who she was. <laughs> That's why I fell in love with her. Yeah. Well, my question is, so what, a couple things. What do you think her influence is on drag culture, but also what do you think the youths, people my age, don't understand about her that they should? Oh, it's a great, question. A great question. Yeah. Yes. Also, RuPaul's Drag Con this weekend at the Javits Center. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> don't worry, we'll come back. <laughs> Madonna, um, first of all, which part do you want me to answer first? What she did for, yeah. for culture? Yeah, sure. Okay, in general, Madonna was the one who had the balls to get out there and speak and do for the, for the gay community back then, and employing dancers and showing their lifestyle and truth or dare, the greatest documentary ever done. Um, obviously, this is my opinion. <laughs> um, and she made it less weird or less taboo and said it's okay these are you know people are people and she catered to the gay community and that's what she did and, and still loves obviously people change and life goes on and her direction changed but she'll always love the gay community but what's really important about Madonna that the younger generation yeah. doesn't know you might not like her music that's fine you don't have to but to know what she did for women for female pop stars, you guys need to know, I love pop music in general, I come from pop music, but she opened the gates for the likes of the Lady Gagas and mm -hmm. the Katy Perry's, mm -hmm. and, and the list goes on, you know, even Beyonce will credit her. It goes on and on because she had the balls to do what nobody else could do and nobody else wanted to do. When everybody else was, there were, you know, the Catholic Church was protesting outside of her mm -hmm. shows, yeah. she didn't care. She was the one who had a black Jesus. She was the one who was burning crosses. <laughs> she did. It was Madonna. Mm -hmm. right. You know, she paved the way. Yeah. She is the ultimate, ultimate, you know, there's, listen, there's Diana Ross and there's other ones. I don't want, I'm talking strictly pop music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She really opened the gates and now, you know, because of her, the kids yeah. are off and running. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I love it. Back to DragCon. Um, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, we just love I you. I can talk Madonna. Yeah, I was like, I we just love you so much. Yeah, we just want, it was so many things we oh, want to talk about. Oh, I love you too. But I, I first became aware of DragCon last year when I saw some lovely queens getting out of their car, like walking in. I was like, where are they going? I want to go. So the only thing that intimidates me is like, I want to come correct if I go. I want to yeah. dress. So like, what do you suggest people who want to come and really like, like you just go all the way in when you, when you go as a... The beauty of DragCon is you can come as you are. Okay. You okay. will never, ever be judged. Okay. I'm not gonna judge you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna judge you. Nobody's gonna judge you because we are all, like I said in the beginning, this is under the roof of love. This mm -hmm. is the house of love that Mama Ru built. And that is no joke. Is he my best friend? Yes, but I mm -hmm. also preach what he stands for. And it's the truth. He's only ever been that for the 20 plus years that I've known him. I've watched him come up in the name of love. Honestly, he did it himself. Right. You come as you are. You wanna wear sweatpants? Girl, you wear sweatpants. Okay. You wanna come in full geesh? You come in full geesh. <laughs> it's up to you. Nobody's, you know, it's, it's all about everything. Halfway through the day, I take my shoes off and wear um, slippers. It's true. <laughs> It's true because they start to hurt. So you come as you are and you be who you are. Okay. And some of the queens don't even come and drag. It's, ex it's exhausting and difficult to okay. down there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long day. If I come though, I am gonna do it up. Girl, do it. Yeah. That's the moment to feel your oats, yeah. you know, so to speak. That's yeah. <laughs> to walk in and be like, hey, <laughs> this whole thing, you know, you could do all that. It's really fun. You've known Rue and Clearly, your best friends with him and worked with him for a long time. You yes. won a Webby Award with him. You just yes. won an Emmy Award with yes. him. Yes, which is so, which was, and then and the Emmy Awards were okay this year, but that was a moment I think everyone agreed you upon. You guys, I don't get the shade on the Emmy Awards. <laughs> I was there. Was it fun? I had fun. It was just so much more interesting to me this year because 
you had the people come out, say something little, and then the presentation. Right, was, right. You I like that. I liked the reunion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't yeah. mind that part. I didn't mind it. No. Then what did you mind? <laughs> I'm, uh -oh. I'm not going to say anything. I want to get a job later. Uh, <laughs> um, You're off to a great start. Yeah. <laughs> but you guys won the Emmy. But did you ever think when you guys were friends back in the day, like, oh, you would have a, the, the drag con, you have the show, you have uh, the podcast, you have all these things. Was this, was this in your guys' head, like, planning to see, or just more just like, we're having fun and we're working, we're going to see where this goes? It's a little kind of combination because we started out professionally. Now, I've known Rue since I was 17. Right. We worked in the nightclubs together. Um, we started working together by accident in 1996 on a radio station here called WKTU. Mm -hmm. And we did mornings there for a few years and we were put together for Fashion Week. They had been auditioning me. They brought Rue in because Supermodel was out, you know, a couple years right. before mm -hmm. and they put us together. And it was like, when he saw me and I saw him, it was like, oh, of course. <laughs> it's this moment, and we did radio together that was so successful that he brought me in to be a sidekick on his VH1 talk show right. back in 96. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was the beginning of the relationship, and we would sit and we would manifest, and y'all might not believe in quantum physics or the secret, but honestly, you put that message out to the universe, you take your order, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have a vegan burger mm -hmm. with a side of a television show. <laughs> <laughs> put that out into the universe and dreams do come true. So yeah. we were doing the podcast last week and uh, Rue looked at me with tears in his eyes and said, we're manifesting our dreams. Like right. it's happening. We just did a pilot for our talk show for wow. the RuPaul show and mm -hmm. it's, yes. it's pretty amazing. So um, we didn't sit down and say, this is what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. But through it all, we've enjoyed every moment, mm -hmm. never taken anything for granted, because all of it could be gone tomorrow, especially with this insane person running our country. Yep. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> the fact that we can look at each other and appreciate what everybody loves about RuPaul's Drag Race, the love that people give back to us, um, it doesn't go right. unloved by me. Yeah. I love that you're following your dreams and touching so many people at the same time. And so it was such an honor for us to get to chat with you today. Guys, yeah. give it up for Michelle. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah.